Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this one hurts. This one really hurts. This was a bad one. Let's break down Arkansas's loss to Texas A&M over the weekend. Maybe look at some of the fixable issues that the Razorbacks can have. And maybe a little quick, uh, preview of Arkansas and Alabama coming up this Saturday in Fayetteville. It's all coming up on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. Folks, I uh, uh, I did a live stream yesterday uh, about uh, the little Razorback devotional on YouTube and on, uh, I think it was on Twitter and on Facebook and everything. And it helped. It helped. Like I, I went through, I'm sure, what you all did as well, where I was at the game uh, between Arkansas and Texas A&M down in Arlington. And I was just beside myself after the game ended. Just just devastated. Devastated. Like I, I have not hurt that way over a loss in a long time. But then Sunday comes around, I drive back from Dallas. I kind of get into my whole, you know, okay, let's, you know, let's, let's roll back a little bit and let's think about this. Let's look at some of the things that need to be done, how it needs to be done and all that. And then today I, I'm feeling a little bit better. You know, time heals all wounds. But I, I talked to a few of you and I know that when a lot of you are trying to, you know, rationale or, you know, place blame, whatever you're trying to do, to try to help you get over a loss like that. Uh, it's it, it makes it very interesting to hear from all the different perspectives, but it also makes me feel in a weird way happy because it once again shows that not only do Razorback fans get hurt by losses, but they have such an expectation now that uh, they get passionate, they get angry, they get frustrated, they get all of those things, and that's what happened with AM. You lost 23 to 21, and boy, does Vegas know what they're doing. <laughs> I, was, I, I thought about that after the game, too. It was like Vegas had this game at uh, the Aggies being favored by two. They won by two. Incredible. But here's the thing. I still believe after that game, Arkansas is a better football team than Texas A&M. And that's what makes it hurts that much more. A&M is not a good football team. They're not. They're not good offensively. They're nothing special as far as defensively goes. They're, they're not a great football team at all, or a good football team. I think that they are, the way that they look right now, they may be a team that goes 6-6, six and 7-5 six, and five at best, uh, just looking at their schedule. But they were better than you on Saturday. And the reason they were better than you is you kept presenting them gifts in order for them to win. You know, it happens a lot of times. It happens a lot whenever... You know, you go through so many different games of so many different teams, so many different emotions, so many different results and outcomes, and you get hurt by it, you get excited by it, you get pumped, you get overhyped, you get just depressed. I mean, it just always happens that way. But I've heard people say, though, when I've said that, oh, you, you know, you didn't, like a and did not win the game, you lost it. People are like, well, that's unfair. That's, that's not giving enough credit where credit is due. Here's my thing. I, it's about gifts. If you give a team a gift and they get, they get that gift and then they use it to beat you, that's because you gave it to them. Like you got to start at the beginning of the supply chain. You know, it, it, and it could be on a battlefield. You can use whatever analogy you want to use. But it's like if you, if you were on a battlefield, like back in the old days, and you walked up to your enemy and said, here you go, here is the finest armor and the finest weapons. We'll see you on the battlefield. And he gave it to him. And then on the battlefield, you lose. You get beat by that army you gifted all those things to. How, how is that going to be viewed? How is that going to be looked at? It's going to be looked at as you 
giving them the means to beat you. You lost that war because you did dumb things. You did a dumb thing. And they were just intelligent enough to take that dumb thing you did and gave them and say, okay, uh, all right, we'll just go out there and beat you with it. That's what it was. And that's when you ever you say a team actually lost the game, not a team won the game. That's where that comes from. Now, a and you have to take advantage of it. like Because a and I mean, they did. They did take advantage of it, especially on that stupid fumble uh, play, which we'll talk about. But you're a better team than a and I still believe you're a better team than a and right now. I know that the rankings and all that stuff, you're, gonna, you're ranked at 20th which I still think was a little much dropping you 10 spots after losing to two points by two points to a top 25 team in AM. I think that was a little over the top. But especially for those of you who watched the game, because I, mean, I think everybody, everybody who watched that game knows that Arkansas is a better team. They just made dumb mistakes. And so now when you're reflecting on the game, it comes down to just a few plays. And that's why I love college football. And that's what makes college football so great is that you can look at it and it's just like, all right, well, play here or play there. You know, it, it you need to kind of draw the lines of the ending result there, which there's always a few things. Like, it can always be a lot more specific and a lot more deep than you want it to be. But when I look at what happened Saturday night, it came down to just a few plays. Number one, first and foremost, without question, the biggest play in the game was K.J. Jefferson trying to dive uh, fumbling the ball, a and getting it, returning it for a touchdown. That's the game. To me, that was the big game. I know it was early enough to where Arkansas can make mistakes on it, but I believe that, since, especially since it was first down, if Arkansas scores a touchdown on that goal line stand, they go up 21-7, to and a and does not recover because they weren't good enough offensively to do that. You win that game. And, of course, you'd probably tack on another touchdown, maybe go up 28, whatever. But you win that game. That, to me, was the biggest play of the game, most de devastating play of the game, and one of the flukiest things you'll ever see. The other one, of course, was being a missed field goal. Like uh, I still love Cam Little. I think Cam Little is a, a fine kicker, and I think that he will come in clutch later in the season. But he has to make that kick. I, I, mean, I mean, it wasn't. I could understand it if it was a 52-yard field goal and something like that, but it's a 42-yard field goal in a, in, a, in a dome, you know, where the elements don't, don't, don't play a factor. But he's got to make that kick. And I saw the article of saying that in the NFL, you have to have 35 feet tall uprights, and in college, it's like 30. So if the way that that thing hit the top of the upright, I still cannot believe that happened. And this is what it comes down to. Remember when Alabama lost to A&M last year? Was it because A&M was a better team? No, it's because fluky things like that happened to benefit A&M. And that's what happened in this game. Fluky, weird things happened to benefit A&M. And that was another fluky thing where I'm just like, how? How is that even humanly possible? But it hits the top of the upright, not like the top of the side, like on the tippy top, little tip, hits it. Bounces up in the air and falls down. Brutal. Brutal play. Um, the bad snap there on that final drive. Uh, Ricky Stromberg had a bad snap there. And, you know, that ended up costing you yards and costing you a play there. And that was tough. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. I guess you could go back and say the the, the touchdown that uh, a and had, like, wafting up these little, like, passes up in the air that should have easily been picked, but they weren't. But... You know, those were pretty tough. I mean, it's just, and I'm not placing blame at the, like, on these specific players. Don't misconstrued what I'm saying. I'm just bringing up the plays that ended up costing you this game. The plays that played a huge factor into it. Now, it's not to mean that they're the only ones. Like, Arkansas should have moved the ball a lot more effectively and scored more points. Like, they should have been in position to where, like, Cam Little should have never been in that position to kick that field goal. You know what I'm saying? Like, he should have never had to be in that position. Arkansas should have been up more than that. So, you know, things like that, you know, you got to take into consideration. But that's what makes this one so painful. That's what makes it hurt so much. It's because I believe that if you play A&M 10 times, you win nine. But you just didn't win this one. Now, I know we'll talk about some of the fixable mistakes that they can get back to the drawing board on and 
give reasons to believe and be, uh, you know, hopeful for the rest of the season. But this one's going to sting, and I hope that it sits with the players in a way that they come out firing uh, this week against Alabama and they learn from it. I think they will. I think they will. But uh, it's just I hate A&M. I hate losing to A&M and seeing all the A&M people. And I was the thing, like, after the game, I went out to Texas Live. A&M fans weren't even celebrating. Like, cause they, I think even they were like, uh, yeah, we uh, – we did not deserve to win that game. We're not a good football team. We were lucky that we did. Like that's always the vibe I got. But I'm sure there's gonna be some man and fans in the comments gonna be all like, let me let me say a bunch of crazy tradition quotes that we say as if I'm gonna know what it means. Good. And every time they put that stupid dog on the TV, they go wild. Just a weird bunch of people. I can tell you that. All right. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want 100% certain that you have the best access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. I can't tell you how many people I have known that got not only a great job, but a dream job because they use LinkedIn Jobs. Anytime that they're not happy with the circumstances or the situation that they're in, LinkedIn is a great way to help them connect. And also for those that are looking for new employees to hire some high quality people, they go to LinkedIn jobs. You just go there, add your job and a purple hiring hashtag frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with the right skills and experience. You can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to Faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. So, continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast and um, I want to talk about the fixable mistakes because that is exactly what happened in this game. It would have been one thing if Arkansas just lost to AM, where AM was able to drive the ball down the field right and left, if they were able to just, you know, out scheme Arkansas, if they were just flat out better prepared, better coached, better talent, better all of those things, it would be like concerning. It would be like, well, crap, maybe you're not as good as you are. But that's not what happened. Every single mistake, every single reason why you lost this game is fixable. And I don't mean just fixable. I'm, I'm talking about fixable like that can be fixed immediately. And that's where kind of my more positive outlook comes into play. KJ Jefferson doing what he did when he fumbled at the goal line is a rare, fluky, weird mistake. Cam Little missing a 42-yard field goal because it hits the top of the upright. Major fixable mistake. You know, Ricky Stromberg hitting the ball hitting him as he snaps it back. Extremely fixable mistake. Like these are fixable things. It's just unfortunate that the mistakes cost you the game. But if you don't do those things, you win. You win. Not only you win, you win going away. And I think that the coaching staff and, and the team realizes that. And I mean, you know, maybe that's why it hurts even more to them because they're like, we should win. We should have won that game. But they also have to know of if we limit those, if those, if we make sure that those things don't happen, we're going to win a lot more games. You still got your, I mean, you're four games through the season. You still got eight games left. And this, of course, is in the middle of your, your biggest and toughest challenge going up against Alabama at home. It's coming up this week. So, yeah, it, it's, it's still a little dicey. It's still a little fluky and everything, but. I believe that you have all the tools and all the ability to get better from this and, and learn from this and be able to not make the same mistakes again. And if you do that, you're going to win a lot of games. If Arkan, like, because it's just like that again, it, it makes it such a weird game to talk about. Because I wish I could just sit here and say, well, this is bad. The pass defense played so much better. They did. Now, granted, A and M sucks at passing. They suck at, at offense in general. But your defense did so much better. Your past defense did so much better. You did a good job overall. I know that uh, Duquesne or whatever had a lot of rushing yards, but, I mean, you were willing to live with that because you held them to 17 offensive points. I mean, you held them to 17. 
you should win every game when you hold a team to 17 points. So defense did good. Offense did good, other than just the mistakes here and there. Everything went about what you would have expected to do or expected how to go to win this game. But it just, those mistakes happen, and they're fixable. So I, I feel good about the rest of the way. And I know that a lot of you remember me when I did my predictions. I said Arkansas is going to go 10-2. and two. I said they were going to finish second in the SEC West. A lot of people mocked me and laughed at me and everything. I still believe Arkansas is the second best team in the West. I still believe that, uh, you know, they got a lot of winnable games in front of them. And I still think 10-2 and two is absolutely in play. You know, Bama is going to be a tough one. I'm probably going to, I think everybody's going to pick Arkansas to lose this game to Alabama. But I mean, Mississippi State, BYU, still winnable games. Tough, but winnable games. Still got Auburn, Liberty. Like Auburn and Missouri, you got on the schedule and you should win those games easily. Those teams suck. Ole Miss, it looks human. Like everyone was on all about Ole Miss. And they're because they're like undefeated. I'm like, okay, let's see what they do against somebody who's actually worth a flip. You know, like they, let's let's pump the brakes on Ole Miss because they barely beat Tulsa this past weekend. I think so, Tulsa two lanes, something like that. But let's pump the brakes on them. Like they they have uh, they've yet to prove to me that they're a high quality team. LSU's not a high quality team. So your whole ten and two idea is, is very much in play. It's still very much in play. And if if you're able to to clean up some of those issues, it'll happen. Now just think about this. Just think about this. Think about last year and how the season went. You started 4-0, you lost three straight, and then you ended up, well, yeah, you start 4-0. How did this go? Yeah, you start 4-0, you lost three straight, I'm just trying to remember the last year's schedule. And then to end the season, in the uh, the, the final five games, you went 4-1, and one, with your one loss being to Alabama on the road by touchdown. So it kind of went up, down, up. You don't want that this year. Uh, because, but it could end up happening. If you end up, you know, losing to Bama, and then you got Miss, which we know what they they're really good at in the passing game. So maybe you know, maybe they could, you know, cause some problems there. And BYU is going to be a tough one too. But I still think you're a better team. I, st I yeah, you're right now. You're a better team than every team on your schedule, not named Alabama. I mean, I still believe that. I still believe I'll take my uh, take KJ Jefferson over any quarterback you're going to be facing this week. Uh, this uh, rest of the season, I'll take Arkansas's offense. Uh, I'll take Arkansas's coaching. I'll, I'll take Arkansas in every one of these matchups, except, of course, Alabama, because we know they are the number two team in the country. They are coached by Nick Saban. They do have the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. They do have arguably the best college football player on the defensive side of the ball. They got it all. But the rest of the way, you're in good shape. You're in good shape. It's fixable. It's redeemable. It's easy to work with. And I think this Razorback team, we're going to find out exactly how tough they are, especially mentally. And they come out firing and uh, see if they finish strong, uh, especially in this next stretch of these games. We'll take our final break. When we come back, we'll close up shop and get a little bit to uh, looking ahead to Alabama coming up this Saturday here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so let's look ahead to Alabama and uh, coming up this weekend and just get some quick thoughts on that so we can move on from that stupid game that happened on Saturday against Texas A&M. Um, you know, this is – this Alabama, I think, opened up as a 17-point favorite against Arkansas, what I expected. Alabama is one of the best teams in the country. Their only big test they had this year was against Texas, and we know how close that came to being bad for Alabama. And we know of how much talent they have, how great coaching they have. I don't think that Arkansas is going to win this game this weekend. I, I, I'm trying to be realistic in that. I, I'm not saying that that's impossible. I'm not saying that they can't win. But it, it's just, it's Alabama. You haven't beaten them since 2006. You haven't seen, beat them since the Bush administration. And... It's just really tough for me to to have confidence in them coming out and winning this game, and it has nothing to do with Arkansas. It has more to do with just how good Alabama is. That being said, though, and I know that Alabama's got a lot of good things going for them, Alabama has really struggled any time that they've gone on the road. And last year was tough, and then this year, in their one true road game, it was tough. Like last year's Auburn game was on the road. They, they honestly should have lost, almost did. The A&M game was on the road. LSU game was on the road. 
Like they, they just didn't look good in a lot of those road games. And so I'm hoping that that's a trend that can continue because I think Razorback fans are really going to show up in Razorback Stadium on Saturday still going nuts. Like, even though you lost that game to AM and it sucks, you're still going to have possibly a record crowd against Alabama in that game. Uh, possibly people will just be bringing up the, you know, the, the fact that this could be the year, this could finally be the year where you beat them. Like the atmosphere will be there. CBS will be there. Arkansas is just going to come out, I think, really mad and upset that they lost the game against AM. So I think they're going to be extremely motivated. Because last year's stretch where you had that rough patch, it, it started with being blown out by Georgia and then barely losing to Ole Miss and then having the worst game of your life at home against Auburn. Like, I, I at least love the fact that you didn't get blown out, you didn't get embarrassed, you didn't get humiliated, but you're going to come out mad. It's not like where A&M just straight up beat you and now like kind of put you in your place. I think Arkansas is going to be mad because they're like, we should have won that game, so let's go make up for it. Let's let's go out there and let's let's uh let's show everybody that we are a good team. That you know that that even though that was a bad loss, we're we're not letting it define our season. I expect that to be kind of the case. I expect them to feel that way. I expect them to come out that way against Alabama. But uh, you know, will it be enough? Well, I'll tell you this. You can't have the mistakes that you made against AM or against Missouri State happen against Bama and expect to win. You cannot fumble the ball. Can't fumble the ball in any regard, especially on the goal line. Can't do it. Can't miss field goals. Can't have bad snaps. Can't can't have any of those things. You got to play dadgum near mistake free football if you want to beat Alabama. I don't know. I, I think they're capable. I think that's possible. I think they can do it. They can do it. But will they do it? Guess we'll find out this Saturday. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.